Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You can have your seat if you can. You can have your seat if you can. Yes, Lord. Oh, the band didn't come for no play play today, huh? Y'all got JJ too. Oh, what y'all building us? The super friends over here? Y'all building Voltron. Y'all gonna get somebody mad at me. I mean, uh... <laughs> hey, man, thank you guys for being here. No, thank you to the band again. Thank you so much, man. Thank you to Stan and JJ and Casey and, and uh, Steve Collins and our uh, house drummer Darius back there. Thank you so much, man. Y'all give it up for the band. Thank you for the worship team. Thank you for Aaron Taylor. Okay, I had to get my Aaron Taylor on it. And y'all don't know about that. Y'all visitors here. I'm up. Okay, I, <laughs> I had to get my Aaron Taylor on. Thank you guys so much. Listen, I'm so glad you're in the house today. Today is a special day at God Chasers. We're gonna take Holy Communion today. Amen. I'm gonna take Holy Communion today. But I, I, I want to help you um, with this little bit of scripture first. Then we jumped in on a conversation that Jesus was having with the Jews. We jumped in right in the middle of a conversation that Jesus is having with the Jews. We, we jumped right in. And, 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 and Jesus is just, he, he, he's, he's doing what he often does. What he's saying is, what he's doing is, is, is he's sort of erasing an old way of thinking. Jesus will erase your old way of thinking. Listen, I want to help you right here. Whenever you're dealing with God, do not fall in love with the method. Do not fall in love with the method. The method is always going to change. Look at your neighbor and say, the method is going to change. So, so that means God's going to heal you, but he's not going to heal you in the same way he healed you last time. God does many miracles in the Bible. He does a bunch of different miracles, but he does them a bunch of different ways. And so you can, if you get caught up in the method, you'll miss the miracle. Are y'all with me already? So, so what Jesus is doing is, is really tough. He, he starts to talk to them about manna. Somebody say manna. And what he's saying to them is, is, is really tough conversation because all they know is manna. Because all they know is manna. Listen, I'm going to ask you guys to help me really quick. If you have an empty seat next to you, please move down. We're we trying to get as many people as we can in the sanctuary, especially today as we're going to take uh, communion. If you have an empty seat next to you, please move down as much as you can. Or, or you can just leave that seat open and raise your hand so somebody could come sit next to you. And, and, and um, um, Margo and, and Pastor Adriana, can y'all make sure that we got we, we getting people in the sanctuary, amen, as many as we can. Listen, if you got a purse seat... I love your Michael Kors. It's so pretty. Put it on the floor. Please. I need a soul in that seat. Amen. I need a soul in that seat. Amen. 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 Okay, let's move on. So, again, I, I, I want to be, be clear that I, Jesus is he, is, he is messing up an old way of thinking. He's stepping into a, to, to a system of traditionalism. And he is, he is ruining it for some people who are used to that system of traditionalism. Listen, this is what we do in, in, in church. A lot of times we fall in love with the traditions. We fall in love with the traditions. It's not Jesus we love. It's the traditions we love. Because if you love Jesus, you would do what he said. You would go where he said go. You would follow his word. But if you love the traditions, then you'll be happy and content just doing the same thing over and over. So Jesus says this. He's, he, 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 if you go back to Matthew chapter 6, that was John chapter 6. If you go back to Matthew chapter 6, he says this. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Now give us this day our daily bread. 
He's, he's back to talking about bread, but he's talking about it in a way that says, I need it daily. See, church people, we, we satiate it with bread that only comes on Sundays. For some of us, every third Sunday. <laughs> We satiate it with the bread that only comes on Sunday. But Jesus said, I need daily bread. Somebody say daily bread. So he gave us this prayer. He said, he said, now pray like this. Somebody say pray like this. He said, pray like this. But we turn that into say this prayer. We fall in love with the tradition. He said, pray like this. This is how you pray. We said our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then we called it the Lord's Prayer. It's not his prayer. It's your prayer. He said, this is how you pray. But you somehow, fa we fall in love with the tradition. If you fall in love with the method, you'll miss the miracle every time. He was showing you how to pray. So he started doing, he starts to walk us down this path. This is how you pray. This is how you pray. He said, you pray like this. Abba, Abba Father, who art in heaven. First of all, Father, Father means relationship. Means, let me help some single person right now. Means I'm not by myself. I may look like I'm alone, but I'm not by myself. I have a Father in heaven who loves me, who cares about me. It's okay if you don't clap. I'm trying to help you right now. So when you get in your midnight hour and you think you need a man, you don't need a man, you need the manna. You don't need a man in that bed. You need the manna. Father says relationship. We are in relationship. Our father who art in heaven. So, so first thing is I'm not by myself. I'm not alone. I got a father. There's a father who cares about me. I was talking about this with one of my spiritual sons the other day. And I was talking about my natural son. And you know they have this thing where, where kids can divorce their parents. You ever heard of this? It's the most foolish thing I ever heard of. You can go to court and divorce your parent. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'll be in that court acting a plum fool. All I did for you, how I raised you, took care of you. you oh, you're going to divorce me. Oh, you're going to divorce me, Dominique. Oh, you're going to divorce me. All them diapers I clean. You and this judge, your lawyer, everybody about to get it right now. I don't know what you're what you talking about, divorce me. Because it, <laughs> for those of y'all that are visiting, welcome to God Chasers. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to have you in the house of the Lord on today. I would say it's not usually like this, but I'd be lying. Okay. But there is a, there is a, there is a system in place now where it's called emancipation. You could just divorce your parents. Be like, no, I don't know. I'm not connected to y'all anymore. Craziest thing I ever heard. My son can't divorce me. I can't divorce him. That mean, th th this means something. No matter how far he goes away from me, he can always come back to me because he is my son. We have relations. It don't matter what he did. It don't matter how far he went. It don't matter if he said what he said. It don't matter if he took me to emancipation court. It don't matter because he can come back to my life because he is my son. Some of y'all have went far away and you think you can't come back. But the first line in your prayer that Jesus gave you is Abba Father. You got a father. Somebody say, I got a father. He says, our father who art in heaven. Now understand this. That, that, this, this, this speaks to some spirituality. Now I got to deal with this because we have this in the church where we think everything's common. That's why we call our pastors by their first name. Because everything's common. That's why we call out, we don't, you know, you, oh, he a man just like I'm a man. Just, you know, okay. Because everything's common. Isn't this Jesus whose mother and father we know? <laughs> we, we, it, it is not, listen, listen, it is not um, a disrespect that's going to get you in trouble. It's familiarity. 
you 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 too close because when you're too close to somebody then they lose the they lose the ability to pull you up if we're on the same level then I can't pull you if we're on the same level if I'm just Dante to you when we when you get in a hard situation I can't pull you because we're on the same level God said, no, 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 you got to approach him from this manner. Our father who art in, we not on the same level. I need you to add super to my natural. I need you to add, you can't be honoring the universe all week long and then say, Abba, father on Sunday. That's not how it goes. The universe, the universe is a created thing. God is the creator of things. I never worship a created thing. Oh, I'm just praying that the universe give me good luck this year. Ooh, Jesus. Reading your horoscope. It's called horror. It starts with horoscope. How could it turn out good? Have you ever seen a horror movie? It's the same. Anyway. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, here's where, here's where I need you to understand this. Here's where it gets good. Because I cannot approach a spiritual God from a natural place. So I got to give him, oh, here we go. My praise to a supernatural thing is my access to a supernatural realm. Understand, my praise to something supernatural is my access to a supernatural realm. I cannot expect to have access to a supernatural realm if I don't have worship. <laughs> worship moves me in. Hallowed be, hallowed be thine. Hallowed be. See, see, at first, the whole beginning of the prayer, I'm on earth. As soon as I get to hallowed, I go into heavenly places. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. I'm moving to heavenly places. That's where I can ask for something that is greater than something I can see. That's all of a sudden I get above my circumstances. I get above my situation. When I praise God, oh Jesus. When I praise God, all of a sudden I go high. See, Pastor Kevin, we got this sort of mixed up. I even have a little t-shirt. It says, it says when praises go up, blessings come down. Somebody say, that's my favorite scripture. That's not in the Bible. When praises go up, blessings go down. Now, now to be clear, it's probably somewhat accurate. And I, 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 because anytime you get into the presence of God, blessings are present. His presence brings presence. His presence brings presents y'all with me okay okay but but the bible does say this it says if i be lifted up i'll draw all men unto me so 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 i'm not praising hear me right here i'm not praising god so blessings can come down i'm praising god so i can go out If blessings come down, they in a natural state just like I am. I want supernatural blessings. I can't get those on the ground. I got to get up high. So lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will. I need to be drawn. I don't need toys. I need to be drawn. I'm a grown up. I don't need toys. Stop praying for toys. Pray to be drawn man I haven't even got to my message yet okay okay he said our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name then he says this thy kingdom come thy will be done see you're gonna have to open up your front door and let him in if you want to see God do something in your life see see you got too many hiding places you want to see God do something special in your life, but you're not willing to let him into places. You want to keep hating your daddy. You want to keep hating your uncle. You want to keep hating. He said, no, no, no. I got, you got to open the door and let me in. Hallowed be thy name. Okay, I came to where you are. Now I, I invite you to where I am. 
I invite you to where I am. That means I got to open up the door and let you in. I can't stay mad at her forever. I got to open up the door and let you in. Some of us, oh, some of us, your, your, your heart is closed because you're still mad about something that really, it should have been over a long time ago. And you can't see the fullness. You can't receive the fullness of the Lord because you're still stuck in that situation. Let them go. The truth is they're not thinking about you no more anyway. You still mad at him. He married, got two more kids. <laughs> Hear me right here. You got to let them go so you can move into heavenly places. So you can move into heavenly places. He said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Now on earth as it is in heaven. I need you to understand something. As I moved into a heavenly place, he moved the kingdom of heaven down to my place. I moved into heavenly places. He moved the kingdom. That's, that's why all of a sudden one plus one don't equal two no more. Because I brought the kingdom down into my place. Now, now I subtract. 10 from 100 and I end up with 150. Because I'm in heavenly places. You like this math won't work, PD. I, I don't have enough to, to do what I got to do right now. You're not in heavenly places. If you were in heavenly places, you could subtract 10 from 100 and have more than enough to do what you got to do. And this is something that I can't teach you. I can't teach you. I'm just saying this, but I can't teach you. To, you won't believe it until you do it. That kingdom math is so messed up. You won't understand it till you do it. Then you'll look and say, well, how do I have more money than I had last month when I didn't? I must have forgot to pay something. You start going back through your bills. You never experienced that. It's because you haven't let the kingdom, thy kingdom come. Into, okay. Everybody don't have an amen for that. That's okay. That's okay. Amen. Y'all have, have a seat, y'all. Y'all have a seat. Y'all have a seat. So hear me right here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, it ain't no broke people in heaven. Am I saying that everybody, hear, hear me right here. Am I saying that everybody in the kingdom not supposed to be broke? No, I'm saying you don't have to be broke. Amen. There might be some broke people, it don't have to be you. Amen. <laughs> That's hard to understand, which is, is good gospel. I'm not saying everybody going to be rich, but you, you, okay, all right. Anyway, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now he says this, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. I haven't even got to point number one. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread, our daily bread, our daily bread. See, I can't, I can't settle for, for, for weekly bread. I can't settle. The bread you get oftentimes on Sunday is stale by Wednesday. You need a refresh. You need to be in a G group so you can get a refresh. You need to go to Bible study so you can get a refresh. The, the, the bread from Sunday gets stale. Give us this day our daily bread. I love this because I wake up every morning and his mercies are new. Every single morning. Somebody says his mercies are new. His mercies are new every single morning. Every day I wake up. Every day I take another breath. I believe that God is doing a new thing in my life. And every single opportunity that I get to breathe again means that God's not done with me. Some of y'all just need to wake up in the morning and start shouting like, like there's an organ there. Because I woke up again. That means God's not through with me yet. That means my story's not written. Listen, it's too many people have written you off and, and you only on chapter two. There's so much more left that God is trying to do with you. Give us a day, our daily bread. Our daily bread. Now, when, when he said daily bread, I need y'all to understand this. When he said daily bread, it wouldn't have meant the same thing it means to you. When I say daily bread, that doesn't, mean, it, it doesn't resonate. But if we were Jewish, 
and we had a Jewish lifestyle and Jewish community. We lived in, the, in, the, in this time of sort of first century Judaism. Daily bread would have hit like a hammer. He would have said, give us a day, our daily, whoa, daily bread. Because daily bread has to do with a substance called manna. Somebody say manna. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to try to help you right here. What, when Jesus says that I am the bread of life, what he's saying is I am manna 2.0. I am the refreshed manna. Oh, hear me right here. But if you don't know what manna is, then you wouldn't understand anything that we read, all them scriptures that we read. You, would, you wouldn't understand them. So I want to help you by, by, by sort of giving you a little bit of a class on manna, okay? A little bit of class on manna. So when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, when they walked out of Egypt, they walked into a place called the wilderness. Now, when we talk about wilderness, wilderness to us sounds like a forest. It sounds like wilderness, like with a lot of trees and a lot of forests and stuff. But it's the exact opposite. The wilderness is a place where nothing grows. The wilderness is a place where nothing grows. Nothing at all. And see, these people were, were planters. Oh, uh, I feel like I feel like I can do. If you're not a sower, it doesn't matter what the ground looks like. Forest, wilderness, it don't matter what the ground looks like if you're not a sower. But if you're a sower, it matters what the ground looks like. And when God moves you into a place where nothing is growing, it gets scary. Some of y'all have moved into a place in your life where nothing is growing. Some of y'all have moved into jobs and you feel like nothing is growing. Some of y'all have moved into relationships and at first it was good, but now nothing's growing. And you, you're starting to get nervous. Because you don't do well in spaces where nothing is. <laughs> I don't deal well in relations in Benjamin Button relationships. I want to know that we growing up, not growing. <laughs> you go in the wrong direction as me. We go. <laughs> I'm growing up. You go. Okay. All right. So, so, so they got into a place where nothing was growing and, and, and God will often take you through places where nothing is growing. But, but hear me right here. I want you to understand this, that the same God who was blessing you in the place where, where something was growing will bless you in a place where nothing is growing. So, so, so they would say this, they would, they would, they would be in their tents. And they would wake up in the morning and they would look out onto the ground and there would be daily bread on the ground. This bread was called manna. Somebody say manna. This, I, I, I'm trying to get through this. Okay, this daily bread was called manna. And every time they would wake up in the morning, people said it fell from the sky. But the truth is nobody ever saw it fall. They just knew that when they woke up in the morning, it would... It would be provision on the ground. I came to help somebody right now. You may not see it right now because you're in the dark of night. But when you wake up in the morning, there will be provision for you. God has not forgotten about you. He has not left you. When you wake up in the morning, there will be provision on the ground. The same God who brought me out of bondage into his marvelous life. He will provide for me. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, see, see, the revelation of Jesus Christ is, is, is not that he does provide. It's that he is the provider. We say Jehovah Jireh, my provide. It doesn't mean Jehovah Jireh does provide. It means he is provision. He didn't just lay the manna down. He was the... Are y'all with me today? Because you still, in your, you still in your desert place. In your wilderness place. And you're worrying about whether or not you're going to have. But if you have Jesus, you have provision. <laughs> it's about trusting Jesus. Remember, we did, we did this. I, we, I, I'm not going to do it again, but I'm, I'm, I, we, we did this before. If I lose everything, but I still got Jesus, 
then I still got every, it don't matter what I lose, if I still got Jesus, he is the provider. Jehovah Jireh is my provider, but he's more than a provider, he's my provision. He's revealing himself as provision. And what, what happens is, I love this, the Bible says in the morning, it said in the morning, they would come out of their tents and it would be on the ground. But I need y'all to understand something that they didn't count time the way we count time. So morning and night didn't work the same, exactly the same way. In fact, in the Bible, he said, and the evening and the morning was one day. So he counted the evening as the beginning of the day and the morning as the end of the day. I know you got to read your Bible. It's in there. Like Prego. Okay, so he said, God said, let there be light. He created the light. And then he said in the evening and the morning was the first day. I, I want you to know that if you're going through a dark time, it's just the beginning of a new day. <laughs> going through a dark season is just the beginning of a new day. But get this, but get this. The Bible says when they have morning. Now, uh, you think morning is when the sun came up. But if you read your Bible, the Bible says that on day one, he created the light. But on day four, he created the sun. You think the sun is the light. But the light was created on day one. Oh, Jesus. You keep giving credit to a created thing for giving you light. Let me help you. Here's the revelation. The morning is when you wake up. If you want to see morning in your life, if you want to see morning, if you want to see what happens in the morning, wake up. Stop dealing in nighttime stuff, in old stuff, in old situations, in old circumstances. Wake up. This is your time right now. You can wake up and see a morning situation. So there's a couple of things I want you to know about man and them. We're going to take a, we're going to do the communion. Okay? Y'all ready? The first thing is that the, the word manna, somebody say manna. The word manna simply means this. What is it? What is it? See, there's no transliteration for the word manna. There is no, you know, the Bible, the Bible that we read wasn't written in English, right? Y'all got this? Okay. It was transliterated idea for idea mostly. I, excuse me. Idea for idea from one, from one uh, text or one source to another source. But the original word for manna doesn't transliterate. There is no transliteration for it. There is no explanation for what it was. There's no explanation. It, it, it doesn't transliterate. The, the Hebrews said manna. The Greeks said manna. The Latin people said manna. Spanish people say manna. German people say manna. In English, you know how it's pronounced? Manna. <laughs> and so, so we have the word, but the word really means what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? See, you serve a God that's so good. Oh, Jesus Christ. That, that you won't even be able to explain yourself. People will be like, well, how'd you do it? How'd you get there? How'd you make it? How'd you get that job? And you start stammering and studying. Well, I was on, uh, I, well, I did this one. Well, I, I took a couple of night classes and then uh, I, don't, I, I don't really know how it happened. All of a sudden, I tell y'all this right now, I, the job I have, the nine to five job I have right now, I don't know how I got it. They called me on the phone. We met at the Doubletree Hotel. At the end of the call, they said, you're hired. I have no, I, I didn't apply for it. I don't know where it came from. Whatever it is, it's good to my soul. God will do the same thing in your life. You don't have to, oh, hear me right here. You don't have to have a degree. Oh, Jesus. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have social circles. You don't have to be, they don't have to let you into their network. Hear me right here. When God is ready to bless you, he'll bless you all by himself. And everybody will be looking around talking about, isn't that Bernita from Cleveland, Ohio? Isn't that Bernita Ward? Isn't that Latwana? Isn't that Kevin? And the truth is, you'll be thinking it yourself. One day they're gonna they're gonna realize I don't I don't know as much as. One day they're gonna realize I had to Google that. <laughs> but you don't understand. It's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through. What is it? What is it? 
I don't got the degree. I didn't get all the. Some people got more degrees than a thermometer, and they looking for a job right now. I've had the same job for almost 20 years. See, God, when God's ready to bless you, he will bless you. He not, he not going around checking to see if it's cool to bless you. He not trying to check your social circle, the circles you want to be in, the clubs you want to be in. God said, I'm going to bless you. When it's morning time, it'll just be blessing on the ground. You won't have to do nothing to work for it. Second thing that I need you to know about manna is just that, that because it's, what is it? it? It didn't taste the same. Manna is literally different to every person who tastes it. If you do a study on manna, if you really do, if you do a theological study, you could do this right now. You could theologic, I mean, Google is the close you can get to. It. <laughs> but if you did a study, you say, what did manna taste like? You'll get all kinds of different answers. Different people pass down different things to their tribes. They pass down different things to their sons and daughters. Some people said it was sweet. Some people said it was, it was like a sweet bread. Others said it was like popcorn. Like it tasted like almost buttery like a popcorn. Some people say it was more like a bean. Some people say, some, some people say it was oniony, that it, it tasted oniony, that, that it had an onion flavor to it. You know, what I, you know what the revelation to that was for me? God showed me, he said, I am what you need me to be when you need me to be it. I am whatever you have a taste for, whatever you have a desire for, whatever you have a thirst for. Let me be. I am what I am. Let me be what I'm supposed to be in you. Oh, hear me right here. I, I need you to understand this. Some of y'all haven't seen God in his fullest because you're not hungry enough. You, 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 you have settled. You have settled for life. He said, I come that you may have life comma and have it more abundantly some of y'all haven't crossed over the comma so you're still on the life side and God's been good he woke you up this morning he started you on your way but you haven't seen the supernatural blessing of the Lord because you haven't he said seek me while I may be found David said I will search for you and I will find you I want to keep going after God till I get what he has for me I, 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 so, sometimes I need God to be a doctor I don't feel good and sometimes I need to be I need him to be a lawyer because you said I did what I didn't do <laughs> sometimes I just need him to be a what a friend I have in Jesus all my sins and grief to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God Oh, so he was a friend at the beginning of that song, but he was a burden bearer at the end of it because he started carrying my burdens and things that I couldn't carry anymore. Things that was too hard for me. He said, he said, he said, hook your yoke up to me. Oh, dude. he said, hook your yoke up to me. He said, and I will carry the burdens for you. Even the songwriter couldn't describe him. He was a friend at the beginning and an and a, and a ox at the end. What I love about God is that for me, he could be a steak. Because I like a steak every once in a while. I like to. But you know, Kev's more like a seafood guy. And for him, he, he could be a lobster. And then, you know, for Mo, he could be a cheesecake. And I'm like, what's Pastor Dante talking about? But when we all get together, he's a buffet. I start telling him what God did for me and he start telling him what God did and then the same thing that he did for him he did for me and all of a sudden I can all taste and see that the Lord is good all taste and see that's why we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony because God tastes different to you man it tastes different Jesus will be what you need him to be when you need him to be it. Have you tried Jesus? Come on, man. I need some church folk in here with me today. This is so, so man, what is it? Man, man, it tastes different. Listen, listen, I need you to understand this. This man, you couldn't be selfish with it. Manna would not 
stand for your selfishness. What's that mean? That means you can only get a daily portion. It had to refresh itself every day. If you took more than the proper amount, you would look at it later and it would turn to worms. Right there in the container you put it in because you have to trust God for tomorrow. You can't, oh, hear me right here. You can't just, you can't just get by on your grandma's salvation. You can't just get by on some old school salvation. You got to know Jesus for yourself. And every day you got to trust him again. And every day you got to trust him again. And every day you got to trust him again. And every day you got to trust him again. Every day it's got to be refreshed. That's why you can't afford to just go to church once a month. You got to get a refreshing. You can't afford that. You need a, a, a daily dose of Jesus. You need whatever you can get. You need the text line, the connect hub. You need everything. You need the YouTube channel. You need everything you can get so you can have a daily. Are y'all with me on today? Somebody give God praise if you got a daily dose of who Jesus is. I got to go. I got to go. This is the last thing. I think I'm going I'm, I'm to leave it right here. Man of moves. Man of moves, Kevin. Man of moves. See, the Bible said that there was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by the daytime. I need you to understand that God will be your provision. He was not only just the bread on the ground, he was also the pillar of fire and the cloud. So, so, so when it was cold, he was fire. And when it was hot, he was a cloud. You ever been on, out on a hot day and all of a sudden a giant cloud just came right on? You start thanking Jesus. Woo, God, thank you, Jesus, Lord. The cloud, Jesus. The cloud. That's how you got to, that's how you, that's how God is. He is the cloud. Somebody say the cloud. When things start getting hard, when it starts getting difficult, he is the cloud. When it starts getting too hot for you, like cool in the gang hot. When it starts getting that hot for you, God said, I'll come back. I'll be the cloud. Some of y'all, that was anachronistic, boy. Y'all missed it. Y'all said, cool, who is cool in the gang? Okay. <laughs> but get this. The Bible said that they would wake up in the morning and the cloud would have shifted. The cloud would have moved. Now, what they understood is that you have to follow the cloud. Somebody say, follow the cloud. They, you have to go where the cloud is going. You have to go where the cloud is going. If you stay and the cloud left, then when you woke up in the morning, the provision that you expected would not be there because the provision is under the cloud. The provision is under the cloud. The provision is under the cloud. See, you want to stay where you are and receive heavenly provision, but that's not how it works. God said, if you want to follow me, then you can have what I have. But if you want to stay where you are, then you can have what you got. I said, no, it's those who follow me, who come after me, who just... Song of Solomon, draw me and I'll come running after you. You want to stay where you are. You want to stay in your sin. Let me help you right here. I don't care how new millennial this church is. Sin is sin. Oh, but it's so cool. They got lights and smoke and everything. Yeah, sin is sin. And if you choose to stay where you are, you'll never get the provision that God has for you. And you better be careful because hell will catch you. No, this ain't, yeah, this ain't that church. There is a hell. There is a heaven. You know why I don't talk about hell and the devil all the time? Because I don't talk about my old girlfriends in front of my new one. That don't mean they don't exist. Hear me right here. Some of y'all, you, 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 you go into this church, but you're not chasing God. You come here every Sunday to stand still. No, 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 no. God's saying, come on. 
Come on, come on, come on. I'm here. I'm here. Seek me while I may be found. See, 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 you don't realize that the cloud is moving. And you got to move with the cloud. Your provision is where the cloud is. And you keep saying, God, I need more love. He said, move with the cloud. God, I need more patience. He said, move with the cloud. God, I, I, I need more understanding. I need more wisdom. He said, well, the cloud keeps moving. And you, you got to move when the cloud moves. You got to move where the cloud moves. When the cloud starts moving, Gabe, you got to pack up everything. The Bible said they had to pack up the tents, the, every, the tabernacle. Everything's got to go because the cloud is moving. The cloud is moving. Boy, I want to get deeper right here, but we got to go. I want to get deeper right here. Because some of y'all, it's not that you're not moving. It's something in your house that's not moving. And you're going to have to figure out how to pack it up, pick it, put, put it up, vacuum, seal it. Because <laughs> God said, we got to move. I, we got to move. How dare you have a child living in your house and you get up and go to church and they turn on ESPN. How, how dare you? Oh, son, the cloud just moved. If you don't move with the cloud, you're going to have to move out of here. The cloud is. You with a, a. You with a person. You've given this person your everything and they won't give you a $1,500 ring. A uh, junior. I was at church today and uh, the cloud moved. So you can stay here. I'm gonna pack up my stuff. I feel the cloud, oh, the cloud, Jesus. Shando, walk around your liver. Shando, the cloud, Jesus. The cloud is moving. No. No, that's the thing. You miserable on a job, but you're scared to apply for a new one. The cloud is moving. See, I'm a practical preacher. We can talk about all this church stuff, but if I can't help you with the cloud, if I. Cloud is moving. Jesus said, I am the manna. I'm the new bread. He said, your fathers ate that manna and they called it a miracle, but they died. If you eat this bread, if you eat this bread, if you eat this bread, he said, you'll never hunger again. You'll never thirst again. And you'll have everlasting life. It's, it's the bread. He said, he, said, he said, it's not enough just to see me. It's not enough just to see me. It's not enough just to see me. He said, you got to believe on me. See, that's our problem. We, we have an we have a Americanized understanding of some of these words that are Greek and Hebrew and Latin. And, they, and so well, what, when the Bible says believe, it don't mean believe like you believe. It don't mean, well, she said it was true, so I believe it. No, 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 no. It means, to, come here, Kevin. This is what believe mean. Come here. Don't get scared. You face that way. He know what I'm going to do already. He like, Lord, have mercy. What's about to happen? You got to be comfortable for this illustration. Comfortable in who you are, you know, and who God made you to be. Okay? Are you comfortable in there? Okay, all right. Because I am. Okay, all right. <laughs> Believe in the Bible means this. It means to wrap your arms around something. So when that thing moves, come on, I move. When that thing moves, I move. When I say I believe on Jesus, I can't say I believe on Jesus as long as he is where I am. When he moves, I got to move. 
when he moves, I got to go where he goes. To believe on something means to put all your faith, all your hope, all your interdependence on that thing. When I say that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life, I'm not talking about that fake belief where you sort of believe on Sunday and then you kind of believe on Monday, but by Tuesday you don't know you're still praying back to the universe. I'm talking about believe. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you believe that he's there for you? Do you believe that he'll never leave you and never forsake you? If you believe, then you'll see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. Believe has to do with my confidence. I'm confident in who God is. So even when I'm in the wilderness, I'm confident that he'll feed me. Even when, I don't, when I'm not getting checks written, because the truth is, the person who was writing those checks, they were signing them, but they were signing for somebody. Yeah, come on, come on. Them checks you get, they, they, somebody signing for, they, they, this is from God. My provision comes from God. I believe. Somebody say, I believe. So Jesus said this. He says, not enough to see me. How many of y'all come to church every Sunday and see me? You see me in your mama. You see me in your grandmama. You see miracles. You see me do all kinds. He said, but you never believed. It's not enough to see me. Have you put your trust in me? Have you set your hope on me? Because when you set your hope on me, when you make me your provider, you, you'll see that I, I will provide. And my God shall provide all my needs according to his riches and glories. God is a provider. He said, but will you believe? I'm the bread of life. I love this. Jesus, Jesus, he, 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 he said when he was about to die, the Bible says that he took bread and he, he blessed it and then he broke it and then he gave it out. He, he was showing them how you make a man, how you make a woman. He said, this is what I do. I take him. I take her. God will take you from everything you understand, from everything you're comfortable with. He'll take you out of your comfortable place. You'll think everything is good, and then he'll just move you to a different place. It'll be new friends. It'll be a, old friends will walk away. All of a sudden, you'll be like, oh, well, I thought we was great. God said, no, I'm taking you. You thought they left you, but the truth is God took you from them. He says, I'm a taker. I took, I took Moses out of his comfortable situation. I took David out of his comfortable situation. I took, I took somebody who was in the field and put him in the palace. What do you think I do for you? I'm a taker. He said, I took, I took, I, 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 I take. What I want, I take. He said he took the bread. Then he blessed the bread. Listen, there's a blessing on your life. You might not know it. You might not feel like it. But there's a blessing on your life. God cares about you. He loves you. He has not forgotten about you. I know some of y'all feel like you're in the wilderness. But God says, if you really look at it, I've been feeding you. I've been feeding you. I've been taking care of you. Really, you've been, you, 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 feel, you feel lonely, but you're not alone. You haven't been alone. I've been there with you. He says, he says, he says, he says, I take you and I bless you. But then I break you. See, we, we want the taking. We want the blessing. We don't want the breaking. But this is his process. But understand something. He always blesses before he breaks. <laughs> see, see, see. I can discipline my kids because I bless my kids. <laughs> you can't discipline my kids because you don't bless my kids. When you do it, it's abuse. When I do it, it's love. Get that. And the Bible says, he says, I won't, I, won't, I won't break you before I bless you. 
we serve a God that that's good. He's that good to you. He said, I won't break you before I bless you. And some of y'all feel broken, but if you really look back over your life and see where he brought you from, your soul will scream out hallelujah. Thank God for blessing you because he always blesses what he breaks. Understand this though. He doesn't break you for no reason. He breaks you so that he can give you out to other people. So that they can see how good he's been to you. So that they can get a little taste of how good God's been to you. See, oh, where are my chefs at? There's something called a moose bouche <laughs> When you go to a really nice restaurant, they just give you a little taste of something on a spoon. It's just supposed to get your palate ready for what's about to happen in your life. The truth is, you're in a moose bouche for somebody. <laughs> God is about to just pour you out just a little bit so that he can bless somebody else, but he needs them to see oh, where you came from and what you went. He needs to take a little boy from the East Terrace. He needs to take a little boy from Gates Elementary and he needs to turn him into something so you can see that God can do it if he can do it for Dante. Do it for you. He takes it. He blesses it. He breaks it and then he gives it out. He takes it, he blesses it, he breaks it and gives it out. He, he, he took Jesus, he took him and separated him. The truth is that every, every young boy Jesus' age un, and two and under was murdered when Jesus was born. Imagine what it's like growing up when there's nobody your age. Because everybody who was growing up around you your age was murdered was taken away Jesus was taken taken out of his comfortable environment taken out of Bethlehem taken and, and, and the truth is I love this that you didn't hear about him again till he was 30 years old because because your story is being written in the darkness God is writing your story and nobody ever know, nobody knew what you went through during those times nobody knew what you went through and the truth is they'll never know what you went through but it prepared you for where you're going at, at 30 years old Jesus went to be baptized and the Bible said the sky broke open God only deals with broken things the sky broke open. Jesus, God yelled down. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He blessed him. So if he took him, then he blessed him. And there's a breaking that's coming. If he took him and he blessed him, the mature Christian understands there's a breaking that's coming. And Jesus went to the cross to be broken. But not for nothing. He went to the cross to be broken for you so that he could be passed out to each and every one of you. So the bread could be passed out. The Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon us. And by his stripes because he was broken we're healed God only deals with broken things he breaks the sky to let the rain come down the rain breaks the ground so that a seed can get down in it the seed breaks open so a tree can come up God only deals with broken things and you want the fruit but you don't want to be broken But he said, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up. And we say, great, great. How do we lift you up? And he said, on a cross. Jesus' final act on earth was him being lifted up to be crucified. 
But he told them, he said, if I'm broken, if I'm broken today, then three days later, I'm going to get up with all power in my hand. Listen, let me help you. What Jesus was showing you is the preview to your own life. Because if you feel broken today, count three days. If you feel broken today, there is another, there's some more of your story to be written. If you feel broken today, just give yourself just a little time. And God said, just like I rose up, if I can raise me up, I can raise you up. We serve a God that's been broken for you. His body broken, beaten, shattered. His beard pulled out. Lashes on his back. Blood oozed from his body. So that you can have eternal life. Today we're going to prepare to take Holy Communion. But, but before we do, I want, to, I want to do something significant. I want to ask you, do you, do you believe in Jesus? Not, li- not like, like, like I come to church every once in a while, but do you believe in Jesus? Because the Bible says that if you believe in him, you will not perish. If you listen, listen, if you believe in Jesus, then your brokenness is not for nothing. You know the difference between me and, 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 and my unbelieving friends? My pain is not in vain. My pain is a seed. Your pain is a seed. But if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to meet him right now invite you to a knowing relationship with Jesus. It's very simple. We say a simple prayer. We, we believe in this. We believe in the, in the Romans model where it says accept, believe, and confess. That's all you have to do. So we're going to say a little prayer. We're all going to say it together so nobody feels alone. But the truth is, if you, can ex- if you can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and if you can believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, we believe today you are saved and you change your eternity. If that's you today, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time, I believe that you are saved on today. I believe that your life has changed, that your eternity has changed, that you used to have a ticket to hell and now you have a ticket to heaven. But I want you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to take one more step of faith because if you believe on him, I believe that you have to step out on faith. So if that's you today, I'm going to count to three. And if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand as high as you can raise it. One, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you or how they feel about you. It doesn't even matter who came with you. The only thing that matters is Jesus loves you. Two, God, you serve a God who cares about you, who wants you to live an everlasting life with him and everything you've been through prepared you for this moment if that's you today three raise your hand as high as you can raise it somebody's coming to pray with you somebody's coming to pray with you somebody's coming to pray with you and the saints are rejoicing all over this building and the saints are rejoicing all over this building thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah